Hey guys, welcome back to DMAT Customs. Part two of the, of the new diff install on the Area 51 project. I was going to do this just in one video, but um, it started getting quite long in the edit, so I thought I'll cut it up into two for your viewing pleasure. Some, some might say displeasure. I have to put out a little disclaimer right at the beginning of this uh, video. You, aside from the actual sort of rear diff housing setup and stuff, you're going to see some some fairly sketchy engineering uh, on the axle spines, some backyard butchery, redneck engineering, some moronic machine shopping. You see some hillbilly fabrication right here at DMAC Customs. This is evidence, by the way. Let's, let's move on. Let's just move on from that. Just focus on the good stuff. Hey guys, well, day two on this little project of the diff swap and carry on for the Area 51. We've got to cut the axles down and extend the splines, which is my little project which I have only heard about in theory. I have never seen it done. Could go wrong. Possibly could. Quite likely could. We're going to do it anyway because it's locked down. These shorter 28 spline axles are pretty thin on the ground, so unless you want to buy new, which may end up doing but yeah we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so what i'm doing is extending my splines by hand with a one mil cutting disc on the grinder don't laugh i have like i said i've heard about this before so i don't know how long they'll last but again it's not going to be a high powered skid car or anything like that doing quarter miles or anything like that but it's just going to be a cruiser so hopefully they hold up we shall see Anyway, let's, uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so as I just sort of said, I have heard about this in theory. I have not seen it in practice. So what I've got to do is I've got to cut these these two axles 18 mil shorter to get them to fit into the shorter um, diff housing. Um, still into a 28 spline diff center, small, whatever. And you can see, I don't know, I can see, probably can't pick it up on the camera, especially not from over there, but there's yeah, 23 mil, so you can see from the wear pattern on the on the spline as it is, it's 23 mil was it going into the old centre with a total of like 37 mil of actual spline, so I just need to extend the spline only about sort of 7 millimetres, but I'm going to take it a little bit further out just for a little bit of wiggle room. If this doesn't work, it doesn't really matter. I can get new axles. Um, I just want to get some axles back in there to um, get this thing back down on the ground so I can roll it around at least anyway. This whole diff assembly has got to come back out, come back apart, limited slips got to get put in it. I can kind of assess it all then. It's all got to get painted and all welded up properly in that anyway once, once it's all mocked up. This is at the least for mock-up purposes, at best, they might stay in there. So we'll just see how it works. Doesn't work, like I say, no no big deal. But yeah, interesting little experiment though anyway. So I did start doing a couple of them last night with the, with the grinder, the old Dewalt. Not a paid sponsorship. But anyway, I'm just gonna get on with it and you guys can watch along, see what happens. Mm, could be a train wreck or a car wreck. Hopefully not either.
having a little think while I was uh, doing this, cutting this little bit of home machining type of thing. Um, I know there's probably plenty of engineers and car guys and mechanics and all sorts of people out there who would probably just condemn this completely outright. Um, and fair enough, is that it, this is some serious Bogan redneck hillbilly racing, redneck racing stuff. I officially retract my snarky comment about the redneck racing locked up diff. I think I have now at least equaled that with my hand cutting my splines on my axles. Hmm. We'll see. Like I say, worse. Worst case scenario, as long as they can get me rolling this thing around on the ground without any drama and for mock-up purposes, that's, that's a win. Uh, will this stand up to a thousand horsepower on a quarter mile? Nah, I don't think so. You never know though. Mind you, these axles are only rated at 600 and something horsepower anyway, so I'm not going to be anywhere near that. So cut half the spline off so that well just under half the spline off so that brings me down to maybe around about 300 horse so that's probably about right so according to my scientific calculations that should just be perfect um, with that amount of spline that I've got left on there take through stuff plus my little seven mil extension I'll give you a closer look anyway she's pretty don't laugh all right she's pretty rugged um, this is probably the worst one because I went around it twice I got a little bit conservative with the old uh, thing grinding cutting and so of course as you saw me test fitting it a few times I had to like yeah that'll be alright we'll, we'll find out anyway still smells like diff oil in here when I opened up that one oh boy she smelled she smelled like someone had jammed some roadkill in there and so now that I've uh, um, embarrassed myself by cutting those splines down like that back onto the housing gonna give these a bit of a, a little bit of a clean up as you can see I spilt some diff oil around here so I'll give them a bit of a clean up it's stones before I um, bolt them back on I ended up to put a little bit of each primer on there so I thought I'd put them out in the bake oven so next up I gotta clean up these brackets so while I'm waiting for that stuff to dry before I can put these axles and that back in I'll clean up all the little tack welds and stuff on my four link brackets, by the time I've done that, I should be able to get those park brake hub assembly things, I don't know what they're called, and put them back in, chuck the axles back in, bolt this sucker together, and uh, yeah, go from there, I guess. Okay, so my um, hub parking brake, e brake, thingy bob, finished baking in the bake oven, so right. Now it is time to start reassembling the axles and stuff like that. So, hmm, that may be a problem is the bearing races that are in this might not match the bearings in there. They should do, but that might be the only thing that hangs me up actually is the bearing races that's in here. May not marry to that. We'll find out though. I don't actually know whether the um, drum brake bearings are different from the disc brake bearings. Could be. Um, where did this go? Didn't find out. Eh? Ah, straight away, trying to put it on backwards. What a dipstick. Here we go. Hey guys, I just wanted to quickly interrupt this episode and just politely ask you to subscribe if you haven't done already. It's free. Hit the little bell off to the side somewhere for notifications and any comments, questions down below. On with the show. Okay, so that's um, that all back together. Lots of noise coming from inside this diff, so as I just turn it by hand, so I imagine what it sounds like running behind a, a motor. <laughs> It'd be pretty horrendous. But 
the pinion's not set up, the mesh isn't set up, nothing is set up, hand cuts, blinds, so it is what it is. So it's all going to be coming out again at a later date. This is just setting it all up so I can mock it up, get the old, uh, what would you call it, the four link brackets and all that kind of malarkey on there. And um, hopefully give me that wheel clearance up in the guards that I'm looking for. I'm going to drag this thing up underneath the car and start getting it ready to centre it all up and position all my brackets and all that kind of stuff. Last time I actually used welding wire to kind of tie the brackets into place just to get them in and cooey and then uh, yeah. Okay, what a mission that was. Just I forgot how much how tricky this is to center up everything and get everything in the right places lying on the floor. Got my pinion angle. I just hooked up a ratchet strap and hooked it to the crossbar for the step notch. Set my pinion angle at three degrees. Nose pointing up. I hope this is right. <laughs> we'll soon find out. Worst case scenario, cutting brackets off or maybe adjusting the arms the link arms um, actually that's probably all I'd have to do would be adjust the link arms depending on how far out it was but that hopefully is right I'm just putting these brackets in that on this is the last one and I've rechecked all the um, centering and everything's all good got the drive shaft just loosely well, kind of bolted back on. What's that noise? So I'm just about getting ready to tackle these back on again. And then it's got to do the bag brackets. If I can get this back into place. There we go. It'll be good to go. Aye. Sweet. Measured out some marks from the other diff. Just to get me in the ballpark where I should be. That one seems a little bit out. Mind you, it's not to say I didn't make a mistake putting the other one in. It ended up maybe with it off centre. So, just trying to find the natural place that that bush wants to, wants to sit in its centre. And then I'll wire these in place with just with some welding wire or something. And then I'll go through and check all the measures again and make sure everything's all honky-dory. That bag's got a bit of a wear mark in it from whatever it was in once before. Next step, some welding wire, I reckon. According to all the interweb literature and possibly even the instructions that came with this four link kit that I bought from Summit Racing, um, the bottom bar should be roughly parallel to the ground when, um, when at ride height. So I've got it, it's actually on my setup. I'm gonna have it pointing down slightly to the front or raised slightly to the back, which is the way you look at it at ride height. And there's all sorts of calculations went into positioning of the top bars. I can't tell you that stuff off the top of my head. There's a, a calculator online, which you can enter all your, it's actually an Excel spreadsheet. You can enter all your, um dimensions and stuff and that into it and it can tell you your 
what they call it, thrust angle or something like that. Your um, this is really awkward lying here like this. Anyway, so you can um, calculate all that to plus or minus depending on what sort of application. Drag racing, um, they have it one way. Four wheel driving has another way. Street cars have another way. I'll work this out to be in the street car parameters. Um, I'll try and find it again and put a link in the description to this little calculator thing. If someone, some wizard from some forum somewhere posted it up on uh, the interweb and there's lots of forum kind of things pointing towards it forum posts and stuff like that kind of pointing towards this um what do you call it this spreadsheet sort of thing which is it's really quite cool and just kind of helped helped me get my head around how i had to where i had to put my points of contact if you know what i mean and the angle of the um triangulation bars and stuff on on this here i've kind of gone at it as far as i can anyway because otherwise it's going to run into the pumpkin and on these cars you end up having to cut a cut up the under seat pan on the floor i have some folk have been able to do it other ways and they weld the tabs onto the front of the axle tube um and that just doesn't sort of sit right with me for some reason it just feels like the forward thrust under acceleration possibly i know it can't but it just feels like it would want to roll the diff over it shouldn't be able to because of the bottom um if that makes sense but it just looked weird to me so i just wanted to make sure mine were at least kind of on the top somehow anyway next step some welding wire and some more measuring okay cool thank you Okay, lunch is ready, but I just want to get this marked and measured while it's in my head. Decided on 180 mil from the center of the hole to the flange on the brake, park brake hubby thing. And I'm just going to put a mark on there just so I can recenter it when I come to take it on. Whoa, hear that angry little dog sketchy neighborhood i think they might be pit fighting those anyway so that's it marked after lunch i'm going to tack these brackets on and then i can reseat the bag mounts tacked in so now off to my airbag plates I just gotta clean up the old tacks on those give them a quick clean up from any surface rust and then um, bolt them back into place and give them a wee as well and then we'll put the wheels and stuff back on and see how it all fits all right that's all my bag plates tacked back in. Some pretty average tacking went on there. So, but yeah, so that's all good. Now I just gotta, I'll chuck the shocks back in, chuck the wheels on, see what happens. Actually, I should see if I can get the wheels on before I chuck the shocks in, because I may have to still undo the bags. Hmm. Well, as you can see, yeah, still can't get the wheels on without undoing the bag, bottom bolt on the bag. Still should be able to fix that with hopefully the longer airbags, the ones that have more of a open close. They've got the same closed size as these ones, but I've got another th two or three inches of down the way. So possibly if I um, put some air in these, it might push them down a bit further. I might just try that. Well, I chucked um, about 30, 35 pounds of, into the airbags. It just was enough to push it down that I can actually get the wheel in 
without having to undo the bag. Alrighty, just putting the little second shock back in now to undo the bag mount on the other side, on the left hand side, to drop the axle far enough to get the wheel on. I can't figure out why, it could be body over chassis measurements and stuff. Um, everything else still seems to measure up fine. Could just be one of those 1950s bodies that's not quite the same. And I've already been into that side of the, you know, that area as you've seen if you've looked at the other videos and possibly this one too. I've changed all the wheel arches and stuff. Could be a little bit out there. Who knows? It's not really that big a deal. It's just a pain if you have to take the wheels on and off to drop that bag. So that's why I think I will get some maybe SS7 Slam Specialties 7 or something like that. There are 7, uh, I can't remember. There's this product code. I've hopefully got it saved on my Summit Racing watch list. Um, for a bag that compresses down to like two and a half inches and runs out to, I think it's 11 or 12 on the one I was looking at. These ones only go to nine. So another couple of inches is all I need, fully extended, to be able to get the wheels on and off without having to undo this and possibly the shock. Well, I might still have to do the shock, but again, that's much easier to get to that than it is up into here. And if it's only one rather than both, that would be better, you reckon? Oh, that grinding noise. Oh, it's probably the handbrake thing, isn't it? Hopefully. Hopefully it's nothing important. But, ultimately, this is now, this little exercise is now centered the wheel in the wheel tub rather than pushing it out to the outside, which is what I wanted. Two days worth of work to move the tyres 20mm in the ways on each side. Day and a half's worth of work. It's 3 o'clock now. Late starts, it's on lockdown. Not doing any of this early morning. Carry on. Yeah. Happy with that. Alright. Really itching to get this body off the chassis so I can finish the chassis properly and clean up all this rusty scaly crap and weld all my brackets and cross members and stuff in properly and start getting some stuff finished man there's so much of the stuff just mopped up and tacked together and it's, oh, it's, it's painful so that's how she looks from the outside if you can see up there it's dark but i've probably got between the inner fender, I've probably got a good sort of two inches now and should be still heaps on the inside oh Christ, the heaps on the inside to clear for brake calipers and crap like that. You can see down on the chassis further down there, that's where the old four link setup was um welded onto the chassis, which is probably going for more of a high back end thing rather than a low back in thing um not really my thing but someone's so i cut it all off and did a whole new ins inside the frame four link um it's four link setup i got from summit racing uh on the whole the build quality is not bad but all the bolts are too short they got nylock nuts on them and the bolts aren't even long enough to get through to the nylock so I'm going to have to uh, replace them all with longer ones. When I get that far, it's written on my list on the fridge. So that's, that's where we at in the minute. Well, my hand cut splines seem to turn the differential, or the wheels, from one side to the other. Who that pulling up outside my house during lockdown? Well guys, it's time to close the door on this episode. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching, thanks for making it this far again. Yeah, it was a bit of an adventure. It was I originally did that four link setup before I started doing these YouTube videos, so 
it was kind of cool to be able to do it again. Um, didn't really do anything any different, maybe just being a little bit more pedantic on measurements and stuff like that this time around, which I think I was last time as well, because I've never done it before, so this time it felt maybe a little bit more relaxed, but kind of knew a few more things to look for. Seems like a lot of work that I'd already done to have to redo, and just to, to gain uh, 40 millimeters or so, um, 20 mil each side, for tire clearance, it just tucks those tires in ever so slightly. Um, and when I just had a look up underneath, it gives me a pretty clear run right up. There's, the tires aren't gonna obstruct on anything until they basically hit the top of the wheel well, which could be a future problem. I'd love to be able to get this down on the ground and have that bit of chassis cut, but I just haven't got enough access in there to weld that up nicely as nice as i'd like it to be um so i really need the body off the chassis to be able to do that um yeah so i don't really want to cut that chassis and just see how much it's going to interfere yet until um i've got the body off but then i really want to only have to put the body off once but at this point i might end up having to do it maybe twice possibly five times uh yeah so thanks for watching um, if you haven't subscribed, it'd be really cool if you did. Hit the bell for notifications and stuff like that. And it should be, be cool. Peace.